Well, hello again. This is Victor, and we are here with a, the second in a short series of kind of behind the scenes with starting up a mod list and a working game for Skyrim Fits and Starts. This is post prologue. This is hopefully going to be my standard build for all of my upcoming series, seasons, whatever you want to call them, of Skyrim Fits and Starts. And so I wanted to make a video just showing how, how I do these, how I do it for myself. I'm no great expert, but I've done a lot of modding. And the way I learn, one of the ways I learn best is by watching other people do stuff. And so rather than try to make a step-by-step -step tutorial, which I'm not very good at, and other people like Gopher are, I just figured I'd make some videos just showing, and, and you'll find a few other that's on my site there, uh, Modding Skyrim, there are two or three of them in which I do something similar. So, so here we are, and this section is where we're going to set up the mods in the mod configuration menu. And we're also going to hop back and forth just a little bit so I can show you a couple things relating to Mod Organizer and how it handles things that SKSE and other mods do while you're playing the game. And they're important and it's important to know what to do with them if you're going to use Mod Organizer and why in, again, it, it is rather powerful. So this here, the first interface you see, is the race menu mod, which now that SKSE64 is out for uh, Skyrim Special Edition, I am assuming we're going to see race menu popping up fairly soon, uh, I hope. It's a big complex mod, and I think I read somewhere that, I mean, the mod author was prepared and working on it, but it'll be, it might be a while, we'll see. But I also have uh, Winsong uh, Wiko and Winsong Immersive Character Overhaul or something like that, so that's why the, the faces look a little different. I kind of like it. It's a, it, it just, again, it's a little bit better. But Bethesda's character people, I don't know what it is. It's one of those things, you know, uh, Oblivion. Uh, I never liked the game that much anyway, but the characters just did me in. I can't even look at them without hating on them. and. Even Skyrim's uh, vanilla characters are kind of cruddy. Uh, going all the way up through Fallout, all the Fallout games, I just don't know what it is about a big, huge studio like Bethesda that does these amazing, big, awful game, uh, awesome games, not awful, awesome, uh, but they can't seem to create good-looking characters, whereas other studios in similar years and eras uh, created beautiful characters. Uh, Bioware is another one. They just can't seem to create a good-looking character to save their lives. You know, it's it's weird. Whatever. Enough enough talk about that. So let's just pick a, a random race here, and we're going to look at it. Uh, and I'm going to show you something, a couple of things that I've built along the way, and then we're going to just do a quick a quickie, and I'm going to show you what happens when you do the quickies, <laughs> as it were. Here's the presets button for race menu and it brings up a couple of other sub-menus. You'll see a bunch of slots here that are all filled. Uh, here's one of my old characters, Slythe Aaron. So let's throw Slythe on top of this guy here. All right, he looks pretty good, right? He looks mean and nasty, and Slythe was, was a great, he was a great character, a favorite of mine. One of my uh, round table characters from way back years ago. So, I have that saved and built, and let me show you where it is. So in, I'm going to have to unlock this, uh, it's a little dangerous sometimes, but so when you create a character in race menu and save it, it appears in the overwrite under SKSE plugins, and if I saved a character in here, it would, it would appear under C H A R G E N char car gen character generation, and in that folder would be a .json file. And so what you would do is, like I did in the previous video, right-clicking on overwrite and creating a mod. 
I would find that file, I would create a mod with it, or if I had already created the mod, which I've done, and it's up here if I can find it, race menu presets. So I've created race menu presets, and what I would do is I would simply go to the overwrite folder, open up the SKSC folder, find the plugin directory where my character file was, click on it and drag it right over and drop it down into the race menu presets mod. Done. And then, after that, from that point onward, it would appear in the presets menu. And that's what I've done with all of my character builds uh, for quite a long time. Uh, going back at least, uh, let's see, 2014 are the earliest ones here, but I had a bunch more that I lost uh, that go back in, that went back into 2013. So, several years worth of character builds are in here. Now, we're not going to play Slythe Aaron. Uh, obviously, I changed something there. I, I don't know what I clicked. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but I could save this preset. So let's call this, uh, we'll save it as uh, Slythe's Cousin. And save that, because he's got a younger red-headed cousin. So now that's saved. So let's, I'm not sure if that'll show up right now. Yep, the overwrite is red. So let's take a quick look at that and see if we have something here. There it is, char gen, car gen, presets, slides cousin, J slot, sorry, not JSON. That's a different uh, uh, scripting. So I would simply take that, find uh, where is race menu presets right here. There it is. Pick that up, drag it over there, drop it into the presets. It's gone from here, which is good because later on I'll want other things. And you can see other mods are starting to create data files. Now we're going to delete this here. Simply Knock has already created its own little, there's a .json, these are script, script files. Um, somebody else has created a meshes file. I think I know what mod did that. That's a, a new mod that I've loaded. I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, the other things that are going to show up here after afterwards are wearable lanterns creates a little uh, data file. Uh, anything that requires any mod that requires something to keep track of will create a data file like that, and it'll appear in your overwrite. And when when you start the game, and you run through at least uh, say one or two saves, if you're careful, or even the first one if you know what you're doing, activate all these mods that are going to create SKSC plugin files. Once you've done that, you would go down, I, what I do is, I go down here just like I did with the with the bash patch, I right click on the overwrite, I create a mod, and I call it whatever the profile name is, hyphen SKSC data. And then I activate that, and from then on, every time you load that particular profile, into a game, it will save the data into that mod and not into the overwrite folder. And that makes life a lot simpler. And it makes, uh, it gives you the ability to switch between characters and profiles on the fly very quickly without having to unload and reload mods like you do in Nexus Mod Manager. The way Nexus Mod Manager profiles work is that when you change a profile, it needs to uninstall a lot of junk from your data folder and then reinstall the new stuff in back into the data folder in order to activate the profile. Because Mod Organizer does not put things in your data folder, it does not have to do that. So changing between profiles is virtually instantaneous. So, alright, so we're done with that and we're just gonna just go with Slice Cousin. Um, and uh, Slythe's cousin Fred, Fred Aaron. All right. So now I try to be really careful when I when I do this, and I take my time. So we're gonna just sort of wait here, and I'm going to s shut up and edit out the silence while these mods load. Okay, so once Immersive Armor's configuration has finished, then the first round of mods loading is done, and I always wait through that. I have made, I've had trouble in the past getting impatient and starting to mess with things. Well, 
don't do that. Be patient. Let things load. There's like 36 or 37 MCM menus that have to load and give the game a chance to do its thing. So the first thing I do, if you have Hunterborn in your load order, go to Hunterborn and start it up. All right, exit the MCM all the way out and then wait for Hunterborn to load. It only has a few modules to load up. It doesn't take very long and it'll tell you when it's activated and I always let all of the little messages in the upper left go away before I start anything else. Then I go back to the mod configuration menu and I start just with the mods that I know that I have preferences for, that I, the, you know, keystrokes, hotkeys, setups that I know I always want to have when I use these mods. So convenient horses is one of them. I always set the harvest ingredient key to my middle button, the, the, the scroll wheel, which also has a button. I always set horse inventory to U, follow toggle to H. I go to horses and excuse me followers and set follower horses on I set in the main I, I, I <laughs> if any of you listened to my um, Malachi Stentor audio playthrough you know that I did the little whistle quest which is a lot of fun it was a lot of fun to do especially in an audio only version because I could I, well I could do things that you couldn't see me doing uh, to manipulate the situation it was a lot of fun and there were a couple of very uh, spontaneous moments in there that just worked so well anyway it's a little it's a fun little quest I encourage everybody to do it if you use convenient horses but I'm gonna override it for now um, and horse charge is already enabled. Followers, uh, we'll have to wait for a follower to do anything else. And that's pretty much all I do in convenient horses. Now you have to back all the way out of the MCM. Let the thing load. Make sure that all your settings are written to the file and then you go back in. Don't try to go from mod to mod because it won't work. Or you might get a couple done, but then you know something, anyway, just trust me, it doesn't work well. Now I go back to Hunterborn and set up my features for Hunterborn. And we discussed this, I think uh, uh, Michel Lamontagne and a couple of others have, have agreed. Uh, Hunterborn has a lot of good features. It's a lot of fun when you're doing, when you're doing a strictly a hunter character. For video purposes, I turn off all the time stuff. I go to tweaks, I turn off the animations, I turn off the screen blood, but I do turn on a couple of things. I like to require hunting knives, but I make them common because why make them rare or uncommon? That makes no sense in a realistic way. They should be common. All merchants should sell them. You might not be able to afford a really high-end hunting knife, but you can at least buy an iron one from the first merchant you, you, you see. Anyway, so I always put that on. I, I set all these prompts these uh, these default actions to prompt. I don't want to pick the thing up by mistake. I've done it numerous times and it's a pain in the ass. I don't set any hotkeys for Hunter Born. I usually set taxonomy on, which helps you uh, to sort of, uh, as it says, uh, allows, pardon me, allows you to classify animals Hunter Born does not recognize. So it'll ask you a question. If it doesn't recognize it, it'll ask you what you want to do with it and you can tell it what to do. Hunterborn is very good at recognizing what mods you have loaded, so you don't usually have to do anything over there. And I don't usually mess with many of these because they just add more, I think a little more script function than I want to have running in the background. We don't want a lot of, we want to try to, you know, not certainly not eliminate, it's impossible, but we want to try to uh, keep the script load as light as possible while still using all these mods. So back out again and then go back in. Next one I set up is Immersive HUD. Two li quick little things in Immersive HUD. I always do the key press toggles and I always link all Sky UI widgets. That's all I do in Immersive HUD. That way, when you press X, things come up or go away. Um, you can, in Sky UI, uh, the Sky UI menu down here, you can set things. Uh, certain like active and passive effects to show 
Um, I just pretty much leave Sky UI vanilla. Don't mess with it too much. Okay. I don't mess with any of the default settings for Harvest Overhaul. Again, you can set a lot of things up as you like. I tend to leave it alone. Creatures, it's fun to mess with this. I may do that later as we go along. Some of this stuff I will leave depending to depend on what kind of character I'm playing. Honed Metal, another one that we'll just wait and see uh, what, you know, what character comes along and uh, what we think their particular storyline is going to give us, you know, to require of us. Um, I need, I do set a few things, I do make a few changes in I need. I set up the drink key to B. I don't know why, I just do, that's where I put it. I will change the hunger, thirst, and fatigue rate depending on my character. If the character is a big, robust orc, I will probably increase the hunger rate. I will probably decrease the fatigue rate. Things like that. These are nice little tweaks you can make to, to sort of customize, customize your character further. Uh, difficulty, I generally leave that alone. Unless, for instance, a Bosmer perhaps, I might, uh, I might turn on things like cannibalism. Um, and I will turn off harmful raw food. Bosmer tend to eat raw, raw food. I might turn that off for orcs as well. Um, so, but for, you know, you know, weak milk drinkers like the Imperials, uh, yeah, you know, harmful raw food is, is got to be there, you know. Um, so I will also turn on, um, let's see, uh, visible water skins we don't need. We don't need any of the automated stuff. I don't like that. Um, uh, where is it here? Advanced horse needs. I love horse needs. It really doesn't affect the horse that much. It affects the stamina slightly, but it's a lot of fun to feed your horse carrots and apples and stuff. So I really, I really love that part. Uh, follower needs. That's fun. I've used it or not. And again, that's sort of going to be based on the character that gets created, and and we'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, so what's next? We've done Immersive HUD, we've done I Need. Um, Jackson's Map Markers I put in there specifically for one of the mods that I loaded, the little Atlas uh, Pony mod, uh, the, 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 the pack, pack Mule Pony, uh, because that mod treats the pony as a follower, not as an animal. So if you fast travel, you can lose them. So you want to be able to set markers on things that you can lose. So that's what Jackson's map markers does so well. Um, I don't change anything in Ordinator. I usually leave it pretty much alone. Um, I don't change much in Predator Vision. Sometimes I turn it on. If you're running an ENB, depending on the ENB, it doesn't really do much. So the, the ENB that I like the most is called La Profeta, and it's the one that I'm running here. And with that, Predator Vision does very little. However, uh, let's turn it on. I usually set the, the night vision activation key to L, excuse me, L, uh, and then I turn sound off. And here's why. I believe that, um, the, well, believe that. we all know the human eye adapts to dark places, right? If there's no light at all, well, we don't see well. Cats do, dogs do, humans don't have all those little reflective cones that, that other animals do, but our eyes do adapt to the darkness. So I think it's not unfair or overpowered to use something like uh, night vision and you can see it the color change a little bit that's the effect of the ENB it doesn't really work in vanilla Skyrim or excuse me in, in un ENB modified Skyrim uh, night vision will make things significantly brighter and you can change the values in the MCM to make it more realistic I like the ability to change it I'll set it down to 25% or something like that just to brighten things a little bit so that when you walk into a dark place you know some people think utter darkness is realistic well it's not I'm sorry if there's light if there's torches if there's other things 
what a lot of these mods do that create darker spaces is they just it's like putting sunglasses on in a dark room that's not realistic so that's my little rant about predator vision and, and the use of it all right so what's next I need is done ordinator religion I leave that pretty much alone you can change the the uh, the divines that you uh, you know what it takes to how many days of praying it takes for a, I just leave that pretty much at, at its uh, default settings and again with a, a very devout character so you were gonna say one of my characters might be a, a vigilant of Stendar or or something like that well I might go into religion and tweak a couple of the values in there again same thing with sacrosanct that's another Enai Saeon mod I might tweak some values in there if I tend if I end up uh, being a, a vampire Thieves Guild requirement. If I end up being a thief, then here are all the little items you can change to make the the thief's quest line trigger a little bit later and with a little bit higher skill required, or not. You can set this back down close to vanilla or whatever you want. Those these are things I'll leave alone, depending on uh, what I roll as a character. We're getting to one of the newer mods that I that I loaded in. We're almost there. Trade and barter. This is another mod that you have to start. So I go in there, back out, and wait a few seconds, and then go back in, and trade and barter should be uh, activated. And I again, I leave it pretty much default. If I feel again, if I if I end up playing a a merchant, say like one of the alternate start options is a merchant. Well, then I might go in here and, and adjust that. And the next one down, Trade Roots, this, this thing is amazing. It's such a wonderful mod, and you can really, really tweak things. Now, I'm going to show some stuff that's kind of spoilery, but these are all the, uh, the little tweaks you can make to uh, supplies and how much and values and, uh, and amounts and so on. You can tune prices in here. These are all the barter and so on, and prices and you know, uh, uh, speech levels, things. Uh, there are quests, small, little mini quests that are built into into the mod, uh, you know, gathering stuff. And a lot of that's hidden stuff for you to discover as you're playing with the mod. But here are the places where those quests occur. Uh, there's one in Dragonborn, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and here are the show quest effects. This is again a little spoilery, but this is what you get. This is what you're, you need to uh, to gather, uh, um, and it's very good at detecting mods. It particularly uh, it built in compatibility with trade and barter, so that's simple and easy. No 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 big deal there. It's detected other mods here, so you can see that's all. And this is a very comprehensive and really well-built mod, so I recommend it to everybody. Um, display notices when calculating and applying regional variations. I, I leave that alone. I don't mess with it. It has an uninstall feature, which is really, really nice. Uh, so this is a highly recommended mod. So I'll leave that done. Now, a long time ago, back in, I think, 2013, there was a combat mod called Ultimate combat. Um, after that, or concurrent with that, were other mods called Duel, uh, D-U-E-L. Uh, there was um, uh, Deadly Combat, which I used along with Combat Evolved in the prologue edition of this series. And since then, there have been mods like Wildcat and Smilodon by uh, Enai Saeon. Wildcat is back up on the Nexus. It was taken down for a little while because he had some issues with it. It's now back up in version 7. However, recently, the author of Ultimate Combat uploaded a brand new version, which is really cool. And this is the mod I think has created that animation folder, meshes here, in my overwrite. Because it's the only thing that's different and new to me. And I'm going to use Ultimate Combat in, in this load order. I am not going to mess with any of the, the, the values right now, but it does add some really cool new animations. Uh, it adds player stagger, but it adds another element called poise, 
which balances the stagger. I think it's a really awesome idea so that you can't like stagger spam an NPC or get yourself spammed with stagger. So you have a chance as you build poise to recover more quickly um, and not be staggered constantly by multiple blows. The mod includes some new animations, some nice whirling animations. It includes some very cool new stuff relating to giants and dwarven centurions. I encourage everybody to go and look at Bro Duel's video about it. It's a good 10 minute long video on the new version of Ultimate Combat. So I'm really looking forward to trying this one out. It was good back in the day. It sounds like it's a thousand times better now. So I'm going to be using Ultimate Combat. Wearable Lanterns is the last mod that I do any kind of tweaking to. I toggle lantern and make that the K key. I always make my lanterns use oil because I think it's, you know, I think it's cool. Uh, I turn this value on, but it often doesn't work. Turn off when sneaking, and I turn auto drop lit lanterns off. I think that's stupid. So, um, and then I turn the radius down to its lowest setting. And that makes for some very cool effects, especially when you're running lighting mods like EL ELFX. So there you have it. That's my setup. And I'm going to save my spot right there uh, with all of those. I'm going to delete all of those, set a new save point right there. And that way, when I come back in here to make my new characters, I can I know all my mods are set up. It doesn't matter that I have Sly's cousin Fred on here because I'm playing on a PC. I hit the tilde key. I type in oops, pardon me, show race menu, and bada bing. And now I can go and create a new character. I can pop up a new preset. Um, off to the right here, you see this stuff. This is all part of a mod called MFG Console. And it doesn't tell you a lot of stuff that you need to know unless you start having crashes, particularly crashes that are locational or that are seem to be related to an item in the world. And when you when those kind of things happen, you can pop up the console near that item and you can look at all the IDs, you can look at where those items are, what they're related to, etc, etc. Anyway, it's a nice little mod to have. Uh, I recommend it. It doesn't require anything of you than to put it in your load order and forget about it. Um, so there you go. This is what I will do when I'm ready to create a new character. I'll come back to this save. I will open up the show, the race menu. I will create I will save that preset again. I will load it into my race menu presets mod in Mod Organizer, and I will go on to the next one. I hope that you have learned something, maybe, or at least seen, aha, so that's how somebody does this, this stuff, uh, and thought, oh, cool, okay, maybe I can do that myself. It's not that hard. It just takes a little you know, research, a little playing around, and a good program like Mod Organizer to keep you safe, if you know what I mean. You can't screw up your data folder when you're using Mod Organizer. You can if you mod unsafely with other mod managers. Again, I will say it again, I'll beat the dead horse. There's nothing wrong with Nexus Mod Manager. It's perfectly good. It just doesn't do all the things that Mod Organizer does. So. Use either one uh, in good health and enjoy. So, folks, uh, here we are at the statue of Mara. Soon you will know the cold of death. And so it seems that soon I also will know the cold of death. So, until then, until the cold of death overtakes me and all of us, thank you for watching and enjoy your day. <laughs>